So, by the way, that email will work with a target or an influencer. You just have to structure it correctly. So if it's a target, it's like, it's more of the direct pitch. That I know you've got this need or you got this want, and I manufacture your drug of choice, okay? Or, and I've got it available now, but it's time is running out. Or for an influencer, I'm a super fan. I've been a fan of you for, for years. And I've been afraid to contact you so far, but I have this project going on that I think is awesome enough for your glorious gaze. All right, fluffing their ego a little bit, okay? Uh, I would love to, to steal 15 minutes from you to talk about this in real time. Could you talk next Tuesday at 4 p.m.? That's an influencer. Why me? Why you? Why now? What next? Okay, because in this case, the influencer, you don't have anything to offer them directly because they're more important than you. They already have more customers than you. But oftentimes, just being honest and saying, hey, I need your help. You're awesome, and I'm trying to be awesome like you. Sometimes that direct approach, almost like the mentorship angle, is really effective. Yes? I just want to share that um, I've been writing this column since January, and I'm shocked I've only gotten one person pitch me. One person. One pitch? One per- only one person sent me an email, and, and she, is, you know, I said, yeah, hey, no problem. That's great. Sure, we'd love to write about you. But I was, I'm shocked that I never get people contacting me. I get a couple bad pitches a week, but they're mostly bad pitches. <laughs> yeah. I find it pretty that's why identifying your influencers is so important, because if you take the, the, the Dr. Oz's and the Oprah's of the world, all the O's, the, uh, the Obama, right, three O's, uh, and then you break down to maybe like a national paper, and then you break down to the local level, you start with the easy ones first, start with the locals. You, you get good at it there, you get the pitch down, okay?